This is the Levels Podcast. I am your host, Justin Hoddle, joined as always by the Triple OG, Willie Mason and DJ Tiger Town in the middle, directing <laughs> Start the conversation. Yeah. Sorry, Tiger Town. People were, um, throw, I read a few of the comments. Um, They're throwing out, uh, there's a Brendan Shaw line about um, that's something to do with us with DJ Tiger Town. What does that mean? I have no idea. I was is hoping that, you'd it, be able it, to give me context. Does, on does that, that mean they think we're picking on you too much? No, I because think because it ain't going to stop. Maybe it's the fact that the nicknames ever changing on a monthly basis. Oh, but okay. I, but I, but I, <laughs> but I like that. You know, because at the moment it, it, it should <laughs> be Brendan D- Shaw. Is it like Brendan Shaw? Shaw. He's Tiger, the Tiger. Tiger. Well, he's he the guy. A bit of a, um, the he, Reddit Reddit guys were smashing him, weren't they? No, no. Yeah, he's the guy that had the fallout with Joe Rogan. Yeah, I know Brendan Shaw. Right? Yeah, he's a, yeah. He was the ex ex UFC yeah, guy. Yeah, but he became like hammered on Reddit and stuff like that. And he went on against that. The Asian fella. Yes, he did. Tiger Belly or yeah. something like that. Yeah. That's where it is. Yeah. Ah. Fucking hammered him. Ah. All right. I see so it. are you the Asian guy? And most I'm, ha- and I'm most Brendan hated Shaw. man on Reddit is Brendan Shaw. <laughs> yeah, it's a that's fucking a- YouTube thing. I is it? Oh, most okay. hated? Right. Oh, well, shit. Can we, can we distance me from that then? I'll even cop fucking DJ Wooden Spoon at this point. <laughs> you will get yeah. that. Yeah. Don't oh, worry, that's coming. You, know, you, you don't want to be most fucking hated man on Reddit. That's <laughs> no, you're not Brendan Shaw. No, I don't think it's you, bro. I think people still... I think the guy's sticking up for about but I'm like if, if we're putting all the dots together <laughs> you boys use Who's Reddit Brendan Shaw I'm not you no. use Reddit no no you're I more Joe Rogan I think I think yeah. they're short I think they're putting me on the show nah I think they're putting me on the show you're, the, uh, you're above you're above you're Bobby, Bobby his name's Bobby, Bobby Lee, Lee. Bobby That's Lee <laughs> <laughs> same Bobby, mo little Bobby Lee he's got the same hey, Bobby he's Lee. got the same sizz like <laughs> look at the sizzle. <laughs> All right, hey, and another one comments I want to address straight away. OG, let me right, let me go. let me just go, get to work go, on this. Go. All right, before we get in the round six preview, Waz fans, the Warriors fans, I didn't give you enough. We did not give you enough respect. We uh, we had a, a five five minutes. That's all we put on them on the uh, on the review show, mate. So I'm gonna go through. They didn't like it. All the moments in that game against the Sharks, just for you Waz fans. So, first of all, I think I said this last week, but I want to double down it. Chance Nickel Clogstag, without him, you do not win that game. His 20 to 30 minutes when you boys were under the pump um, was one of the best performances that I've seen all year. And like I said, you don't get in a position to win without him continuing to fight. Along with a couple others, Jazz Devanga, unbelievable in the morning. Uh, in the morning, um, middle. In the in the middle as well. Um, obviously, Sean Johnson putting a bit of uh, class on it at the back end as well. Uh, was unreal in that game. But I'm going to go through. Let's let's go through for you, Wise fans. I just I'm. I've been sort of um, impressed by these guys all the way, dating back to the trials. They've been unbelievable. Uh, I, if you even go back to some of our shows from last year, before we started doing this at Levels, I talked about the recruitment, mate. So I've all been high in their recruitment. Yep. There are a lot of really solid first graders that probably didn't get their flowers because they're not big name players, but the Tamari Martins of the world, Tamari Martins of the world, who's been un- unbelievable. Yeah, uh, great, I think great he's been. Signing. I think he's been one of the best signings so far this year. Uh, Mitchy Barnett hasn't got to play too much since his neck injury at Cowboys so I've been thinking about him uh, Dill Walker has been unreal with uh, Jazz Tavanga coming off that bench in that position that he's been playing and for me um, probably two of the most underrated well I reckon it's one of the more underrated back row combinations in the competition right now is Jackson Ford on the left and Murata mm. Neokora on the right I think those two guys are doing an unbelievable job um, off the back of the momentum that their back five are getting um, for me, Edward Cosi and Vile, uh, Vile, 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 yep. yeah, Viliami Vilea. Those two guys in particular, they've got the potential to be real players for the Waz. Um, I'm really high on them. They've still got a sneaky couple of errors, uh, a few things to fix up in their game. On the other side, solid. Adam Pompey, uh, Marcelo Montoya, very solid first graders. Don't really do too much wrong. Um, and have been unreal for the Waz as well. Like yeah. I said, Tomato Martin, um, unbelievable. Shawnee Johnson, it's the happiest we've seen Shawnee yeah. since he left Cronulla, um, ironically, after his performance against Cronulla. Uh, Adam Fanua Blake, he's just that dude. Yeah. Wade Egan, I've been talking about him for a while. Totally. I think he has I think he has the ability to be a top three hooker in the next couple of years when Uppy and Cookie finish up. Yeah. Uh, Bunty afoa has got all the potential in the world. If he can sort of just... He's, he's just got to find a way to go with um, with Adam more often yeah. than not because he's he's more like he's got that up and down sort of trajectory like the Warriors had in the past, and obviously Tahu Harris is uh, the leader of their club. He's world class, and he's he he's a world class player who's he was been this for the last couple of years for you, but 
your team's been struggling, so yeah, I think you don't really like, get to see no that. disrespect to the Waz. Like we just like they haven't got those household names, and they're not playing this flamboyant style of football that they're used to. Hmm. Like we're not sitting here going, "Fuck, they played unreal." They're grinding teams down, boring the shit out of them. Fuck yeah, it's and been just, and it's good to watch. Class isn't it? at the end of the game, like yep. I'm like, we're not used to seeing that, so we just sort of seem to breeze through. We never disrespect the Waz. They're always a good club. They're always going to be always great to watch, but we just have been skipping by them. You know what I mean? Like we don't, I mean, we're not putting enough respect on their name. I just don't think. But I, but I haven't seen enough. Yeah. I haven't seen enough. Give me 10 or 12 games and I'll tell you exactly what they're like. 100%. And look, at, at the end of the day, it's more so for me, not putting the wires in the eight just yet is because of my question that I proposed yeah. to you. And it was a genuine question, Mace. And I'm, I'm also having a bit of fun with this, Mace, too, yeah. like going back to the wires. Because you've got to remember, the wires fans... They're loving it now. They get in the comments, but also when the I, I see the Waz fans when they're going bad, they're happy to let everyone know that they're going bad as Waz fans mm. and letting the players and the club know. So having a bit of fun with it, just having a bit, um, having a, a bit of a G up with you. But also because the competition is so close, the top eight is so close. It's the only reason I can't say. Get, you know, we're five weeks in and go, mm. hey, tell you what, the Waz are going to be, yeah. If you're a diehard Waz fan and you want to chuck a bit of your Bunsen on, on your hard-earned Bunsen on go the ahead. Waz, go ahead. Go ahead. But you're not going to get it from me telling you to go do that with our friends at the tab. Who we again, gamble responsibly. Because we right. gamble responsibly. <laughs> and once again, Mace, we're glad to have the tab on board. Yeah. Uh, we love them as our partners. To go on, make sure you join our Levers, Levels Pond... Let me start that again. So make sure you go on and join the Levels Punters Club, the LPC. Yes. It's in our Bets Friends channel. Uh, as always, we want everyone to be playing safe during this footy season. So please keep front of mind, what are you really gambling with? And if you need free and confidential support, call 1-800-858-858 or visit gamblinghelpline.com. Online.org.au. That is a mouthful, isn't it? Yeah, it's a little bit, but yeah, it's important that we it get that important. out, mate. It is. it is. Because at the end of the day, um, you know, we talk a little bit of pun this in is a good here. Message: What are you gambling for? We love having. Yeah, that's, that's a, a great question. Message. We love having a, a, a um, tab on board, but we also we like to have a bit of fun with this. Exactly. People who've been yep. following me for a while know I don't take myself too seriously yeah. that stuff, and you just like. And people who've been I've following me, they know I don't know anything about punning. Yeah, yeah. Like that. Like they were just like, I'm not going to follow this guy's tips. I'm not following his part. Anything, nothing. So they know what's going on. All right. What about our other partners? Mace, we love it. So let's get into it. We've got the high protein. We told you about that on the review show. Mm. I'm going to tell you a little bit about the pre-workout coffee this week. It's a deliciously strong, bold coffee with 800, 180 milligrams of naturally occurring caffeine. 180. How much is, is it? Will, will that get the job done for you, AG? No way. Well, I take this every morning. Yep. I put this in there with like the shred. I don't, you won't wait till we train tomorrow yeah. morning. We'll go to Elab. Yeah. Shout out to Whippet, Chang. Yeah, the boys. Elab, um, Maruba Junction. Get around I'll, it. I'll put a heap of that in. It probably about like two hundred, two or three hundred grams with pre-workout. Yeah. Plus a shred. It's protein, a little bit, little bit of GST protein, on your your milligrams. High protein. <laughs> put it in the littlest shaker. Dash of water. Shake it up and just fucking scull it. It's featuring a high-performance pre-workout blend <laughs> to support energy, muscle strength, and endurance because we're going to need that tomorrow, OG. Currently available in Woolworths online at bodyscience.com.au and in independent supplement retailers. Great product. Great product. Love the Body Science family. Stoked to have them on board. Some great merch as well. Go on and have a look at their merch. DJ Target Town. Let's get to work. Sweet. Uh, Kenty. <laughs> has stolen Mace's take and he's he gone. Know. Yeah, he did. He's gone and blown up a Jamin Salmon and Ivan Cleary on 360. So there's a little bit more in it. He went a little bit harder right. too. I didn't want to watch the show. And there's something I learned this afternoon. I'll tell you about in a little bit. But Kenty reckons. Tell us now, did you? Come on. Um, and so where, you, where did it? If it's no good, go. All right. So you guys know the song "Grenade" by Bruno Mars. Yeah. You know that Kenty co-wrote that and dedicated to Ricky Stewart. <laughs> <laughs> I knew yes, it was going to be good. I knew it was going <laughs> 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 to yeah, yeah, keep going. Kenty reckons, <laughs> besides the fact that he jumped in front of a train for Ricky, that, that he reckons that he, the entire Penrith club has a lack of class and humility. Here's a quote from 360 the other night. As a coach, good on Ivan for standing by his players. As a father who coaches his son, ironically, but as a father... 
Maybe you should have been a little bit more understanding of where Ricky was coming from and just elected to say nothing. Scope, is he on or off the mark? He's he's not he's not completely off. He's not no. completely on. Um, there's always a little bit in it with, with Kenty as well. Obviously, everyone knows that he's got a relationship with Sticks right off the bat. Look, um, I don't agree with... Um, oh, I've said this many times, Mace. Like, if, if you want to stop Penrith... From screaming shit at you or jumping on each or, other or, or jumping yeah. on each other when they fucking score and tries, then it's up to the team that they're playing to stop them. It's like if they want to celebrate because that's how they do it and that's their culture. No, nah. humility, whatever, class, stop it. Players, opposition, stop it. It's up to them. And it was up to Kenty's mate Sticks team to stop it on the weekend. They didn't. Guess what? Sticks went at him last year and. He has more than right away to to say, you know. Yeah. In my opinion, um, Jamin Salmon, the weak gutted dog, to do to say what he said off the back of it. And and one of Kent, Kenty's points too is because I watch this as well, mm. and it's not you know about about us you know particularly going at Kenty in this, but um, he he mentioned that they, they were sort of sulking and, and carrying on last year. I didn't hear one thing from from Jamin Salmon about it. I think he sort of just put his head down, got on with it. I can't remember, Mace. I, I think he handled it well. Yeah, I'd, top do, of that. Do you ever remember hearing him speaking about it or, or telling out. anyone to feel sorry for him? There were other people on, on his behalf, I believe. Uh, I could be wrong. There might be people in the comments that let us know. But last year, I don't. I fucking haven't heard a. I don't think I've ever heard no, fucking yeah. the weak gutted dog speak. He hasn't. I don't no, know. No, ever. Right. Like ever in media or anything. Was where he was having an argument with Luai. Yeah. He doesn't yeah. do interviews. He's kept his mouth shut. I understand from Kenty because I, I said this the other yeah, day. I said, I up. don't think it's it's a good look for yeah. the game. That's me with my fucking- Dad hat on. Little hat going, yeah. the Volandis hat. Like, well, Volandis, shit, okay. That's not, it's not a, that's not a good look for the game. Me as a player- fucking saying exactly what he did mm. acting like he did because you're in the heat of the moment and if you haven't been in the heat of the moment and you haven't been in that moment you don't understand from a player's point of view yeah. you sit in your ivory tower and go that's not a fucking good look that's disrespectful to Ricky Stewart this this and this because you've never been out there mm. you haven't had those fucking emotions built up you haven't scored tries you haven't been in that fucking actual moment so you can't sit there and judge that that's me as the fucking player going yeah. against someone who has not lived that and I've lived moments like that and I fucking say whatever's in the heat of the moment. I don't think it was any disrespect to Ricky Stewart. It was just a little bit, you know what I mean? A little bit You want to call me, you want to yeah. call me that? You just you know, it's like, one of those it, things you chuck in the memory bank, eh, mate? I understand why Ricky did why Ricky said that. I understand. And I and I back Ricky on that. Yeah. And I think Jamie and Salmon knew that he probably acted like that at that time in his life. Mm. People grow, mm. right? They grow. He's hopefully he's not that man he was ten years ago or twelve years ago. Hopefully he's grown to the into the man that he is now. And he's like, fuck it. Here's my time to have a crack back. Boom. That's it. End it. Chucked End it in the memory don't bank. Psychoanalyze everything so much. Yeah. It is what it is. He had that moment, and it's like you, if you don't have, you haven't played the game, and you haven't been in those fucking moments. You haven't been under the pressure that he was. He got humiliated by calling that. He called that kid like that. You put him on Front Street. Let's Ricky Steele calling you that. Mm. Your whole integrity got fucking hammered. That, that was and news he didn't for about say three weeks. A fucking word. There was. That, I think there was a proposed legal action from memory last year yeah, as I'm well. Yeah, I'm just saying, but he didn't, someone like that. He but didn't I don't come know. Out. I don't know if that was directly from him as well. So this like obviously. Like, Obviously, you remember his family were coming yeah. out and they were disappointed in it and all that sort of stuff. But at the end of the day, from from my memory, and it could you know it could be wrong. Someone might be able to correct us in the comments. But mm. James Salmon did. I thought he handled it perfectly. He uh, he let it slide. I didn't. I, like I said, I've never ever heard him fucking speak ever. And then he comes out, scores a try in the best possible he, way he, at the field that it happened. And he fucking hits him he, with a little weak gutted dough. And he could have said something. About Ricky, he had utmost respect for Ricky. Obviously, it happened year, like years ago. As I said, obviously, people change, people mm. evolve. You know, in that moment, you can't let him be that. You can't judge him off that one moment for the yeah. rest of his life. Hopefully, yeah. he's made himself a better person and a better human. You know, and then he had that one moment. He's like, "How do I get back?" Bang, said it, done. But you know, it's, it's don't blow it out of proportion. I, I do, I do agree with uh, Kenty just on the Ivan thing. Like oh, yeah, because, what did he say about because Ivan? of what the situation, say? I think Ivan. Ivan's a cool dude and he very rarely gets things wrong mm. but I think he should have just let that one through to the keeper but what did Ivan say Ivan just said uh, it was good karma it was a bit of karma or something oh he shouldn't have said right? anything yeah so that's, I agree yeah. I agree I just think you know Ivan should have just gone nah we'll let this one slide no comment on it because that's, if, if that's if between Ivan, them if, yeah, that's a exactly. moment that's if gone Ivan knew what went on that's what Kent is alluding to sensitive to, yep. to what the fucking whole situation I, you th go I think he go, does know huh. yeah don't say karma 
Yeah, yeah. There, there was there was there was a sense of karma. There was something like that. You know, there was a sense of karma about. It. I, I agree with Kenty on that point. I, I do. Think, I agree with Kenty as well. Um, I think Ivan should have just let it. Like he, he's he's strong enough, and and they and they'd won by that much anyway. Like I said, like because I, I don't I don't mind what the Penrith players do, but I love that they've got a guy like Ivan in charge who very rarely says anything and just like laid yeah, back and chilled. Him, he lets them be. And and he that's why I love be who they are. Yes, and Nath. Like you know what I mean. Yeah. Nath's like. At the end of the day, Nath's that dude. Mm. Nath is the most fucking humble yeah. um, superstar, in the game. superstar in the game. He never ever really like. Just say if if you if you've got the perception, and I could you know I could be uh, completely wrong in this, but a lot of people dislike the Penrith Panthers. I'm talking about players. I'm talking about fans. We know why. Not many people dislike fucking Nath, yeah. right? Because Nath, you know, does things the right way. But also, as a skipper, he's always got his boys back in a way. Like, he sort of just doesn't condone it, just sort of stays, um, you know, keeps quiet, goes about his business. Um, you know, whenever there's an opportunity for media stuff, he always says the right thing. So, they've got a nice little balance there too because it's like uh, – he knows he's good got cop, a bit, bad cop. He got a little bit of swag about him. Yeah, he does Cleary. have swag. He got a little, you know, just because he does like, have the swag. way he faces like the media and stuff like that reminds yeah. me a little bit of Cam Smith. Mm. You know, like I've seen yeah. Cam Smith win Origins being the smuggest little fucking yeah. head of all time. <laughs> yeah. I've played and I'm like, good friends with Cam Smith, yeah. and I know that fucking look. And yeah, they, and they, they got some swag about him, they got some smugness about him too, Panthers. Because mm. they fucking win and it's hard to beat them out there, and it's hard to beat them anywhere. They've won they've been in three premier three premierships in a row. One, two. They're fucking hard to beat very hard so yeah they got that they got they got a good balance between coach you know it's hard to keep the coach he's coaching he's his son how hard would that be it's very yeah you know what i mean so like you got to keep those egos in check and you got to let them be themselves you know it's not the fucking and, the, and those the 90s boys in 2000s anymore you these there's different there's different cultures and shit now you yeah balance that stuff it's hard even with knife too because a lot of those boys would have grown up around ivan too so he yeah. would have known them as like teenagers yeah. that come in that would have seen them like you you, you know what it's, it's like mate. Year old kid. yeah when my dad had my mates or, or my brother's mates come around he's considered them family you know what i mean like so i'd imagine ivan would have been the same seen a lot of these kids that you know drone they played footy together so very nice little balancing act um, why, yeah. that he plays all the time that, yeah. he, that he does well but just thought he uh, got that one a little just bit wrong just didn't have to say anything didn't yeah. have to say yeah. anything and I agree yep yeah. alright on to the next DJ Tuck Town Kenty again this time with Crawls those two have gone <clears> double team on the NRL admin in, in regards to being harder on players that head over to Union so Kenty reckons that banning players who defect to or, uh, Union aka Suali'i should be banned from state of origin, while Crawls thinks that they should be completely expelled from the game the moment that they sign a contract with a rival code. Fucking hell. Overreaction, or do they have a point? What do you reckon? What do you reckon on this, mate? Oh, mess? man. Just like, if you're playing in the NRL and you are available or for New South Wales Rugby League, you're still playing in the NRL, mm. then you play. Play origin? You play origin. Mm. If you can, if you're available and you reach all the requirements to play origin, you play origin. Pick the best players and that's about it. You can't expel them and all that kind it of would, stuff. So it's spoken by a true fucking journalist. Yeah, but so let's. I'm, I'm just thinking about this because I'm always trying to play devil's advocate on some of these things, right? So if you're a, like during your prime year, you, you went over to Union or you changed teams, mm. just say if you were going to Union the next year and you knew that it could potentially cost you origin for this for that year, right? And you're you're not you're not you Willie Mason fucking yeah. half a dozen uh, or a dozen origins that you played. You're Willie Mason who hasn't played origin yet. Would you, do you think it would be a deterrent for you to not go to Union if you knew that potentially you would... No. A year, 18 months out? 18 months out. So 18 months out, just say Hisuli hasn't played Origin. Yes. Right? Do you think it would be a deterrent for you to not yeah, go to Union and then sign a contract later in the year? Yeah, it would be. It would be. You wouldn't uh, go this far out. Uh, but the rules aren't in place for that. So no, you can't not. play... You can't just be having all these rules made up in your head. You play to the rules. You know, so he can sign a contract 18 months out. Fix the fucking rules if you've got a problem. Don't, well, just sit there and don't just sit there and go, he shouldn't be allowed. Like, make it like that. You mm. know, like sit down and have these fucking big meetings that they have with the NRL. Fix the problem and then you won't have it. Don't just sit there and just go, you shouldn't be allowed. You should be expelled straight away. Yeah, well, fuck, he's playing to the rules. Mm. All the players do. You know, it doesn't, it's not a deterrent for him because why? Because he can still do it. Yeah. Until you sit in this, in the round table, everyone just thinks it has the same fucking mindset and they change the rules, then it will be a deterrent. Other than that, they'll, the players will just keep doing it and doing it. That's it. Play to the rules. Whatever, you, whatever the rules are, 
I'm going to do it. And if the rules say I can sign a contract two years out and still play Origin for two years, I'm fucking doing it. Mm. Change the rules. Yeah, yeah. I, I think it's yeah, it's worth a conversation. For it's, sure, it's, for it, it is worth a conversation. Think, I, but how many times is this going to happen? Fuck yeah. This is what we're talking about. Yeah, that's we can all point. sit around now and go, we should change the rules, change the rules. It's fucking Joseph Suwali. Yeah. He's probably the only dude who's going to do that. Yeah, with even, the home World Cup coming up, you we're going like, to see it happen a lot more. I think. Yeah. No, nah, well, no one to that level though. No one to is that Joseph level who, who's going to go and play Origin. Like, so they're tar- they're tar- they're targeting the the Tolu Collars of the world, the the Will Penasenis, I believe. I think Cameron Murray's another big one. You don't think those boys can play Origin in the next they two can, to three but years? Like, good luck. You're going to be behind Turbo. You're going to be behind um, Latrell. Uh, Latrell. There's about there's Katoni Stags. There's so many centre wingers mm. out there. There's no there's no way you can say that that that, that young kid from Manly is going to play Origin one day. And Penasini's going to play Origin one day. They are good NRL players. Curveball. Nas has apparently been speaking with the Wallabies to to potentially code switch, but he's from NZ and he can't play Origin. If therefore, if Nas was going to go over and he was going to play for the Wallabies, even though he's eligible for New Zealand I in the league, why play for the Wallabies. Well, apparently he's been talking to Eddie, but yeah, like. No. You know, does that make it a bit more of a grey area as well? Like if somebody goes and signs with the All Blacks, like as Katoa was talking about the other day. Oh yeah, that on that one, dream. quickly, quickly on that one, right, Mace? I think you know a lot. Of, yeah. I'm not not sure exactly. I'll, I'll speak on behalf of myself. I grew up, loved rugby league through and through. My dad played for the Kiwis or whatever. Nearly every single fucking Kiwi kid, because I consider myself a strong Kiwi, even though I'm, yeah. I'm an expat. I grew up here from You're when I was Kiwi, three. Right? Yeah. If there was every year, you get the opportunity to fill out who you want to play for, and I was easily eligible to play for New South Wales, Australia. Even though I wasn't good enough, I was still like, you know, you write it down, Kiwis or Australia. I was Kiwis to I die, to the yeah. death, no matter what. Even if I got picked an origin, it was like a thing that I said to myself, like it means way more for me to play for the Kiwis because yeah. my dad played for the Kiwis. He wore the black Would and white. Would you play for the Kiwis for origin? A hundred percent. Okay. Every Fucking day of the week, right? So this is So, but we also, at the same time growing up, like even though I'd never played rugby union in my life, the All Blacks were it. Yes. Like, for all of us. Like, yep. we, you know, growing up, like, I've been a fanboy, like a proud fanboy on socials before with, like, we talked about it the other week. I, yeah, dropping a few names yeah. for a bit of a giggle. But it still blows my mind that fucking All Blacks guys um, fuck with us rugby league boys, especially a guy at my level just because of the content that we do. And, mate, like... I love the Kiwis. Dad played for the Kiwis in in some really big games where they beat Australia. Um, the the fucking Invincibles in in the late eighties and all this sort of shit. Did he did he play in that one with Kevin Kevin Tarmody and Downing? No, nah, no, nah, he no, wasn't no. in that one. It was just after. Played with his stack. uncle, didn't he? Yeah. Oh, he was well, your son. uncle. Keep going, brother, keep going. Didn't he? Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Wait, wait, just one sec. So my point with it um, with with it is that we all grow up Kiwis. Everyone fucking wants to play for the All Blacks. Yeah, I, I did. I didn't even play Union. Like I, I played junior to get a day off at school when I was at Westfields. That was the only reason I played junior. One, because I didn't properly get the rules at that yeah. age. And second of all, my body shape probably didn't suit it, right? So these, these union guys, they're all like big trunks, yeah. like more Mace's yeah. rig, right? My, my legs were too skinny anyway to, to play any sort of role. Maybe an inside center at best, right? right? As I got a little bit older. But... I would love to have played for the All Blacks just because. It's a pinnacle in New Zealand. So when 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 they get like when people come after Katoa uh, and he's a uh, of Tongan descent, yeah, um, he, he played is. for Tonga but born in the World Zealand, Cup. Right? Born and raised in New Zealand until he's about ten or eleven. Well, there you go, mate. They That's, grow up he's on a it. Kiwi. Like, I'm diehard Kiwis rugby league, but understood that rugby union All Blacks are up in a So why, therefore, so just, yeah, back to Nas. Why would he? And he played New Zealand schoolboys union. So he was like a he was a prodigy coming through. I think. Pretty yes, sure, pretty sure. Was he? Yeah, 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 yeah. So big he came name? through the New Zealand um, schoolboys and they thought he was going to be the next big thing. That's why yep. I was surprised he's having me- he's meetings flipped. with Eddie Jones. Yeah, but could just be went, opportunity. And he's, a, and, he's a, and he's a proud... As if he wouldn't go and play for the All Blacks, but... Well, it might just be the All Blacks haven't offered him anything. Fuck, you just back, him, back yourself, big boy. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, he's a proud Kiwi boy. Yeah. yeah that's, what, that's what I'm surprised at. Because I'm yeah. like... I was surprised when he had these meetings with, uh, with Eddie Jones and Eddie Jones was talking to Nas and I'm like... He was talking about going to the All Blacks because he's got Samoan, obviously yeah, Samoan, Samoan heritage, heritage as well. Like he's born and bred in New Zealand. Yeah, because like he's, he's been because like he had the opportunity be, to play for Samoan yeah, in the, in the World Cup. Fucking unstoppable in mm. Union. 
Yeah. That big boy can move. I think he'd look fucking really good in the All Blacks. But it just could just be that Eddie's got on the front foot and, and approached him when maybe the All Blacks haven't. That could just be it. Yeah, well, maybe. Yeah, because he's over here. And then, and like, and, and this is, I think this is what comes down to Nas's decision as well. Like, with the, I think I've seen, uh, could be wrong, there were quotes coming out from Nas uh, recently um, saying that the game's sort of like they're trying to rub those sorts of Nas's, these big bodies out of the game with how yeah. quick the game's getting. And, well, look, pretty much is. Yeah. Like and he's done and well to like, even stick around now. Yeah. Because well, he's what? He's about a buck 28, 30, I reckon. Six foot six and a half, six seven. Mm. He's a big man. Yeah. He is suited to correct. Union. Union, he he would he would just fit straight into that. He's athletic. He's big. He's strong. Oh yeah. He fucking There's hits no hard. Doubt in that. And he would yeah. He, I, that's what I'm saying. He would he would play for the All Blacks. Yeah. I've no how, doubt. How old is Nas? Nice, DJ twenty six. Twenty seven. Twenty seven. Way off. Fuck. Way off. <laughs> oh, sorry, what was your you question about my, ball. What was your question about my dad before, bro? Um, he played with his brother, didn't he? At Tom one point. Um, when they played for the Kiwis, there was I remember whose brother though? Oh, your dad's brother, your uncle. Yeah. Do they? Do they, yeah, play they play together? together? Yeah, they play together yeah, for the Kiwis. Yeah, there you go. Tiger Town. TJ, Tiger Town's been doing his homework. Some research. Yeah, they yeah, but might my, have been. But my, but my uh, uncle never played. Um, for like an New South Wales uh, yeah, League. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, good. Yeah, right. well, what on, DJ Tuck then? Oh, I know my Western suburbs, old boys, mate. Don't worry about that. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? He does. That's yeah. the thing. Yeah, shout Tigers. Out, shout out to the OGs. Uh, uh, speaking of uh, one <coughs> half of the uh, joint merger, the Tigers are at it again. This time getting... You blaming the Tigers? You're not saying West Tigers? This is all for oh, you. Yeah. This, this, oh, no, no. no this, wasn't, this wasn't Balmain. This Sorry. was West Tigers. And they're at it again, and this time they're getting dusted for throwing two US soldiers on their Anzac jersey. So, effectively, the club has been beaten from pillar to post on this, so much so that they've released a statement apologising for the initial design and the fact that they're going to rectify it and they're going to redesign oh, good. the jersey. Look. So, in the Tigers' defence, just quickly, obviously, this is a massive bungle, but yep. they were they came up with the designs alongside Holsworthy Army Barracks, and, yep. and it was endorsed by the barracks. It's obviously gone to the various levels of hierarchy, so obviously NRL apparel, everything like that, it's been approved. So it's been yep. slipped all the way through. That's right, but... Sure enough, somebody's gone to Google Images, searched soldiers, and yeah. sure enough, there it is on fucking okay. Getty Images. Yeah. So, I just, I just want to get your thoughts on this. Yeah. So, look at, at the end of the day, this, I, it's good. Look at face value. I this is very sensitive as well because I've got a lot of respect for for the yeah, Army exactly. Corps, and of I've course, been Army and I've trained with trained with the Holesworthy boys. Yeah. Fucking legends. They look one of the hardest things I've ever done in my life. But I think this goes back to whoever the graphic designer was and how they thought this was a good idea. Because, look, I'm, I'm not well versed in, in looking at a, a picture of army guys, in, uh, uh, like a couple of army mm. um, soldiers and going, oh, that's American, that's Australia. I couldn't, I couldn't tell the difference. If I can, it was apparently the rifle yep. and the uniform and landscape as well. So obviously Anzac Day, we celebrate the diggers you yeah. know, on the shores of Gallipoli and in Tobruk and so forth. This looked like it was in Iraq. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, I saw it. I saw it. Yeah. yeah. So it was. Look, to an onlooker like you or I, yeah, I wouldn't have picked up on that. Yeah, but, yeah, but look it, who you look who the demographic are and who looks at that. All, oh, absolutely. All the, vets, I, all the vets would have been looking at it and just yeah. Go, whoever come up with that? it is like again. I don't want to get anyone fucking no, uh, talk like, de- talk down to someone that's potentially going to get you know, get a lot your of trouble. Due diligence, but you got to be better. Comes to you got to be better. Due than diligence that. when it comes to something like Anzac yeah, Day, absolutely. because you know how special it is in every Aussie's heart. Everyone has a relation who's been an Anzac or something or a friend of. You know what I mean? Like yeah. this, this it's it, it's deep in our history. So. That's something that you need to get right. Yeah, in in, in our sport, you know, it's like, 100%. dude, mate, do do the do all your due diligence. Like whoever's they've dropped the ball on this clearly. Yeah, and I don't care if it's went through Holesworthy. I don't care. Like whoever's doing that with the West Tigers, it stops with them. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, uh, I like the fact that. So are they going to go back, obviously, redesign it, and, yep. and get it all done? I yeah, pull, that's I can pull the stuff can do. If yeah, you want. that's all they yeah. can do. We still got it. How, how how long until Anzac Day? How is three it weeks. end of the month? Yeah, three about weeks, two, yeah. two to three weeks. So look, I don't know for certain. Oh well, obviously Johnny Bateman was in sort of the. See, that was a bad decision. He was well. doing why, press. Why, yeah, they, the why they got Johnny Johnny mm. Bateman on it as well? All right, so West Tigers remain committed as ever to making this year's Anzac Round match in Round Eight against Manly a respectful and special occasion. 
um, the jersey's been criticised because an image on the jersey does not accurately accurately depict Australian or New Zealand troops. Club, sorry, um, never their intention to you know have a. I don't think it's anybody. intention to disrespect anything. No, there's no anything. intention. There's it's no a, intention. It's, it's a an slip awful up. mistake. It's a terrible mistake. As I said, do your due diligence. If that's your job, you can't fuck that up when it yep. comes to Anzac Day. Yeah. The person responsible for that, I'm not sure whose desk it crosses at the end of the day to go. Yep, that's good. Is it the CEOs? Is it the general manager? Is it someone like that in the football department? Someone's okayed everything. So, crisis meeting. Yeah, and with the Johnny Bateman things, pretty confusing. Nothing against Johnny Bateman, he's a fuck. But at the end of the day, he's a pom. Um, I'm sure he respects the jersey. Yeah. I don't doubt that at all. And he's going to play hard for it. And he understands the meaning of it. But still, um, they sh- surely could have put an Aussie in it or a Kiwi on it. Or yeah. I don't know. For me, is that is that a bit puzzling? For no, you no, well? no. I think. And I again, think like done again, that as well. not, it's not like trying to beat down on him. It's more like no, mate. It's Anzac Day, not Allies Day. I get that. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, this is what I mean. Everything over there just seems pretty fucked up at the moment. Mm, yeah, it's it, look. You know, it's one of those things when it when it rains, rains it pours, pours, man, and get, they're fucking get your shit together, oh. Tigers. I mean, as a player, fucking, you just be sitting there, just going, "Fuck me!" Like, <laughs> can we just? Yeah, and they're probably looking at the players, going, "Can you just win?" Yeah, <laughs> it's just like everyone's against each other. We're like, like we're trying to fucking win here. Anyway. Okay, before we get into previewing the games, oh, I just want to let you know about the LPC, the Levels Punters Club's Bets Friends Channel Special. This week, Mace, you know what? I'm that I'm that confident. I didn't even... I, in the last couple of weeks, I've been looking for a bit of guidance. I'm just going to fucking tell you what yeah. it is. We're going to get it up. We're going to salute for the punters responsibly. Of course. I've got Scotty Drinkwater in his first game back scoring in the first 60 minutes against the Dolphins. Tick. <laughs> and look, I've been chasing Manly for the th- last three weeks. There's a lot of bias in it, but I genuinely think that they can beat the Panthers at Penrith. But I'll take nine and a half start. Mm. Nine and a half. Right. I think this is a game. It should be a, a statement game for Manly. So I want them to turn up. A good I hope- gauge. A good gauge. Like, well, are, we, is- are we top four? This is more wishful, a bit of wishful thinking for yeah, me as I well. Know. I want Manly to turn up and go, all right. I was disappointed with the way they were against Newcastle. They come up against a fucking strong Penrith back-to-back champion team. So give me Scotty Drinkwater in the first 60 minutes against the Dolphins. Manly plus nine and a half. You can get that for five fifty with a max bet of twenty five dollars. Yeah, nice. And as always, you always sell it to me. I'm, I'm in. You're in. <laughs> I'm in. Well, you know what? Hopefully the punters <laughs> are in as well. Good. The, the LPC's in. But as always, we want everyone to be play. Let me start again. As always, we want everyone to be playing safe during the footy season, so please keep front of mind. What are you gambling with, Mace? And if you need free and confidential support, call 1-800-858-858 or visit gamblinghelpline.org.au. DJ Target Town, let's get into the games. Brilliant. We're going to preview round six of the NRL. Just a quick note. Odds are accurate as of 5 p.m. Wednesday, the 5th of April. Thanks to our friends at the tab. Love the tab. Thursday night, Melbourne will host the Roosters down in Melbourne. Mm. Our friends at the tab have Melbourne as favourites at $1.67. Chooks out at $2.20. Line's short, though. Line sits at two and a half. Mm. Just quickly before I throw to you, Scope, so obviously Teddy's out, but uh, they've replaced him with a reigning golden boot, Joey Manu. Yeah, not a bad replacement. It was, not it bad was, at all. It was going to be one of the two Joeys. Um, well, yeah. Robbo hinted at that. Uh, Joey Manu was always the choice. Uh, Mace, we've tossed this up before. Joseph Manu would top be top three at probably potentially. He'd be if he played fullback, he'd be a top three fullback. Yeah. If he played winger, he'd be the best winger. Mm. If he played centers, he is the best center. Yep. Uh, if he played five eight, he could potentially be a top three. Five eight. What a talent! <laughs> That's bullshit. You could even play Joe Manu Lock. as left edge back row. Yes, yes, or yes. right edge back row. Oh, he do a job there, and he would probably be top three. So um, maybe well, if he if he gets like in a little, if he loses a little bit of pace, yeah, just keep coming back, coming in, through the middle. He'd be the best player. He'll be a front row boy. Thirty four positions. 
Wow. What a weapon. What a what a luxury to have a guy like him coming back. Mm. Uh, and I, don't, I think the suspension, although they wouldn't have wanted it, uh, a couple of weeks off the bye because he did have that uh, cheekbone injury that he got in preseason as well. So he come back against the Alves. For me, he looked a little bit underdone. So a couple of weeks off was serving well, I think. Yeah. Um, tricky game. Fucking very tricky oh, game to kick it off. That's hard. These are two teams you just it's you don't you don't you don't want to write like it's hard to pick against them. Yeah, like, we got Hughes back as well. And I watched and the way that Melbourne played last week against South, don't let that score even think that South were near that game. They yeah. fucking dominated that game from the kickoff all the way to the end. I agree. I did a lot we did a lot of fucking review on this on South and Melbourne were fucking it was, it was, aggressive. Yep. They ran hard. It was Melbourne like, wasn't yeah. it? They ran with intent from the kickoff all the way to the end. They tackled. They missed sixty something tackles. You know that South did. Wow. No, Melbourne. Sixty tackles. Yes. Didn't feel like. Oh, you know what? This but, is what I said. But in, they were, as I said, they were shooting up, shooting, yes. up, and they were pressuring, pressuring yes, they were. South into what they wanted. Didn't want, didn't want to do. Yep. So all these little like taps, you know, like you're coming in, they're stepping off their right and all that kind of stuff into. Like the you called web. that. Yeah. You called that with Munster. Not every yeah. missed tackle is created equal. Yeah, he was coming. It felt like that. Where it was like, South have got no space. It was like shoot out, miss tackle, go behind. A ball goes. A ball drops. Another yeah. person misses a tackle because they scoop up on it, and people just kept on turning just, up for each other. Turned up. That's what it felt like in my head. Yeah, so it's good and to see what, that you got what the stats it looked for like it. as well. So we're like, okay, well they missed sixty tackles, but they still managed to sort of to to beat South pretty convincingly. So like. I'm looking at both these teams going, fuck, are South better than the Roosters? Well, does the Melbourne factor play into it? Yeah, or, or is Melbourne back? Like, they scare me the way they played. But I'm like, can you go into it missing 60-something tackles a game? I don't think so. Mm. Last, so, last year, these, these two teams had a real emotional uh, round 23, round 24 before it rolled into the Rabbitohs, remember? Yeah, and Jared and Nas. Nas. Nas and Jared and Munster were all getting, yeah, into, getting it. into it. A lot of feeling. Obviously, the big story is the fucking hectic cheese is heading back down to Melbourne. Yeah. Uh, he's been talking a little bit of dribble with uh, Welshy as well. Welshy caught him out straight after the game. Love it, eh? Cheese fired back on the buy round, having a giggle. Love that from him. Can't wait to see him and Harry go head to head. Probably top three. Nines in the game, aren't they? Yeah. Top two? Yeah. Chuck Appy in there? Yeah. Yeah. And oh, Cookie. It's going to be, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm leaning towards the Roosters because okay. I, I, like, I like Lindsay Collins and I like Hargraves. And that back row just seems very even and they've got more experience, I think, in the forwards. And I just think their, back, their backs can handle that. Sam Walker, Kiri, you know, Drew, like you got Toops, Manu coming out of, coming out of yardage. Jackson Paulo's been outstanding. Joey Manu factor is the one that's getting me over. Mm. And if Teddy was playing, I wouldn't even be looking at this. If he, was put, if, he, if he put Joey Manu and put Drew Hutchison on the bench and you got Teddy there, that back five's the fucking best in the comp. Yeah, well, I love. Well, life. I love that you said that because I was on, would have been on the Roosters as well. Yeah, but I'm going to go when it comes down to these moments, and just be purely because you fucking made him your dog of the week. When these Fuck. when these fucking games happen, he's the king. There's a guy that always fucking. You know, you watch. I don't like going against it, though. You watching? You look. You watching Queensland versus New South Wales, and New South Wales stacked, but somehow he's fucking. This little dog, little six with the mo. Where's he from? Where, where's he from? Uh, is he? Is, would he be a sunny coast boy too? The Prez? Be somewhere like Logan or something. Yeah, Lo yeah. <laughs> Logan Brothers is Cam he'd be from Smith the Campbelltown of Queensland. Yeah. He was born in Rocky as yeah, Rocky his boy. Wikipedia page. This little fucking dog from Rocky I, I, skipping right, across the Prez. field, yeah. getting amongst it. He's gonna get under some people's skins too. Him and Kez like going at each other. Yeah, Look for that battle, good, man. Luke the Curry forwards, versus Cameron like, Munster. Come and Kamitha went hard last week. He was good. Harry yep. Grant was outstanding. Brent, yep. Yeah, I, Josh I like was, it. I love Josh it. I, love, I can't best. wait. I can't wait to see this game. I'm on the Bench. storm. I'm on the storm, OG. I'm going to go against you. Yep. And I'm going Juzzy Olam as my any time try scorer. Chasing the eighth, great for weight. He'll be potentially. So sometimes Robbo throws a little curveball as well with the way yeah. he lines up. He, he, he's sometimes versatile, but at face value, because Joey Joseph Suli, he's been playing on the left. Should be Mudders Hutchinson, yeah. who does it, who does a really good job filling in. He's not a good defender one on one. But this is this is a different beast. No, I'm I saying, said Joey. Good, he's not a good defender one on one. He's good he's in a team too, system. He's safe. Yeah, he's yeah. safe, Mace. One on one. But I said Joey Munn is the best center in the game. There's one guy fucking not too far away. And it's Juzzy Ollum. So give me Juzzy Ollum at three dollars ten with our friends at the tab. Anytime, Jam. Get us off to a good start I'm because in, even though I've had a couple of good weeks, I just haven't got the first leg to just get me fucking kicking. I'm with you. I'm with you. With, I'm with you with uh, Juzzy Ollum on Drew early because like 
Munster will somehow get him the ball one on one. Yes. And that's what you want. With, we don't want Hutch. You don't want all these because they come up really fucking quick and yep, they, they do as well. And they cover for their for their um. They for wedge their, yeah, and sweep him behind. Yeah. So he gets he gets protected a hell of a lot. Little Sammy, he's, he's a decent def- he's a decent defender, but he's not good one on one. Little Sammy Walker on that edge yeah, as well. Yeah, there's a lot of there's 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 probably some joy there for Melbourne to have. Mm. Mm. So we're split, boys. Melbourne? Yeah, split. I'm going to go Melbourne. Yeah, split. OGs it's, on the Roosters, but again, Roosters. I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah. You're, you're the same, OG. You wouldn't be surprised if either of them win. Uh, give us Jazzy Ollam anytime. Good Friday special, 4 o'clock at a course stadium. The Dogs will take on South. Our friends at the tab have South as favourites at $1.29. The Dogs out at three sixty. Line sits out at a healthy 10.5. Mace, how's the feeling being in camp after that win on the weekend? It's been good. They've... Um you know, they had Monday and Tuesday off. So Fuck, it's a light week. Because yeah, you had a four-day turnaround. Like, it, you know, Gus like, was furious. Mm. Five days. And I'm like, well, sometimes the short turnaround's good. You just get mm. out there. You don't, you don't do that, that much training. You just get out there. Next minute's Friday and you're playing. Mm. You know, there's not too much time to think about it. A little bit busted up. You know, um, uh, Raymond Fatal Marin is out with a, a grade one concussion. Same as Kicks. Um... Harrison Edwards. Well, Harrison me. Edwards. Harrison Edwards. He's been our best in reserve grade. He's awesome. been our best. He's, yeah, tell um, me a little bit. Tell, he's, tell similar, the he's a similar player to Cam Murray. Okay. He has that oh, sort wow. of, He has that skill set. Yep. He loves ball playing. He's that real connect between the middles and the outs and the and the edges and the halves and all that kind of stuff. So he's he's really good for us there. That's why we're putting him in starting lineup. He's been impressive in reserve grade. Yeah. Um, so that's why he's, he's got the nod for the starting starting third. He plays big minutes, but he has that skill set. He loves digging into the line. He can run himself. He's a good defender, good tall. He had a real mixed mixed preseason. He got COVID and he had fucking boils and all that kind of stuff. Oh, really Raylene's. Rattled. Heavy Raylene's. <laughs> massive Raylene. A Raylene <laughs> attacked his head. Um, <laughs> so he he had a mixed bag of a preseason because he played some games at the back end of the last year. Yeah. Anyway, this is a game where we just need a bit like – this will be – the belief in the culture, next man up mentality. Yep. Just get out there. Don't worry about South. We just care about our, our side. We're going to have some young kids out there that will just breed fucking energy, you know, like the Morins and, you know, you all want these kids out there just fucking enjoying it. 40,000 out Jackson there. Jackson Toppenhead gets a run. Jackson Toppenhead, yeah. That's he's a, been, that's he's been awesome. Yep. Clubman of the year last year, wasn't he? Yeah, mate, he's one of the great, he's one of the best kids in yeah. the, in the club. He's great, just a bit undersized, Dave, but he, yeah, he's a, he's, he is. A, he's, a, he's a toiler. He can he play, but he'll go out there and he yeah. can fucking play. So, mm-hmm. um, you got these young kids who got an opportunity now, and they get to fucking make a statement against South, who are looking to make a statement. Yes, they're very looking, dangerous. They're very dangerous for you boys. They're this looking, week. they're looking at us with a little bit of bit of cockiness, probably looking down on us. I reckon, going, you know what? The fuck you guys think you are? We're gonna come there, fucking, mm. fucking happy Easter. Yeah. You know what I mean? They're going to come there and try and set this. You know, this is when our this is when our year starts. I, heard, like, I think Latrell come out and said, "I'm looking for this as a statement game." Oh, did he? Okay, all right. I, I didn't see that, but uh, really it doesn't like, surprise me. I don't really like hearing that. <laughs> <laughs> I want to hear it next week. <laughs> um, so our boys are prepped well. Captain's run tomorrow. Fucking, she's on on Friday. So if you're a young kid and you just want to fucking get it on, you just ride that wave from the Cowboys. It's nothing better. You know, we're a bit banged up, but who gives a fuck? It's the NRL. Everyone's, Everyone's banged, banged up. up. No one cares. Yep. All right, for me, OG, this is going to be a tough one just purely because I, you know, I've got a lot of respect for what you boys are doing. Mm. I, I was playing some uh, golf the other day and I was speaking to a couple of OGs. Oh, they were my uh, a couple of OG Bulldogs fans and they're yeah. asking me about Bulldogs. Obviously, if yep. you knew who I was, asked me about the footy questions and stuff. I said, you know, I said, this is the thing you can be proud of as Bulldogs fans. Yeah, it might not be pretty, but your fucking team, your club's going to have a crack every they turn up. They're going to turn up every... And they're, and they're going to turn up against the Rabbitohs. I just think they're just going to be outclassed yeah, in the end. Hey. I don't think it's going to be easy for the Rabbitohs, but I think the Rabbitohs really need this game, and this is a game to kickstart their and season. If, and if you're a punter and you weren't in my position, you'd be like, yeah, you'd be probably thinking the same. But I'm like, I watch these kids train every day. I know what their belief system is. Yep. I know the culture that they're trying to build. And this is one of those fucking games where... This, this can really go a massive big step into where we want to go. It's yeah. that next man up mentality. Just, if, you, is, if you fucking jag this one... Yeah, she's, she's on. She's on. Yeah. Because you got troops coming back. You yeah, know, got, got a few, some boys coming back. Got some boys banged up. Um, just hold the then, fort. That's all it is. Hold the fort yeah. till the boys come back. That's yeah. all we got to do. I think it's going to be a tough one, though. 
So I'm going to go South. I think they get the job done. I'm looking for a bounce back game from Lockie Elias. Started the game really, mm. started the season really well, first two games. Been a bit quiet in the last yeah. two yeah. Um, because, you know, the form of the forwards probably hasn't been up to scratch. Now they're getting a few middles back. Um, and when I look at this team, Mace, I just think the size of the forward pack Fucking might just wear you down. Yeah. Might wear you down at the back end of the game. So, especially coming off the, the bench as well. as well. It can do. Yeah. If you fucking stay in the grind like you've been doing mm. for sure. Um, and it's not like, you you know, like as well, I was watching, um, who was I watching the other? I, lo- I like watching the Matty John show when he speaks yeah. to Cooper as well. And Cooper was talking about like, you guys didn't just fucking tuck the ball under your... your, uh, your we your, fucking have a crack. You had a, you had a crack. Yeah. You played a bit of footy. And uh, you're still completing at a, at a decent enough click. Why Die still, trying. Yeah. Gritty. Very gritty. Um, but I'm going to go south, mate. I've got Lockie Ilias for my grateful eight. I think it's, I know he needs to have a big he game is, for this. He is. He's been down for the last couple of weeks. Yep. All righty. Townsville, Friday, 8 Ooh. o'clock. Another uh, Queensland derby. <laughs> North Queensland this time take on the Dolphins. Our friends at the tab have North Queensland penciled in as short favourites at $1.30. Dolphins out at $3.50. Ooh, the line similar to the game previous. It's and you think the Dolphins, AG? Yeah. Scotty drinks back for the uh, for the Cowboys. Is he going to uh, turn and this And Ruben Cotter. And Ruben Cotter. Oh, no, it's not a good bet. Your boy's back. No, the, the original dog. Are they going to turn their fortunes around? What do you reckon? <laughs> Fucking I, 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 I don't, Look, I can't say anything with the Cowboys with conviction these days. What happens is Ruben Cotter being back, he just takes that little bit of workload off Jason Tamalolo. Not a little bit, a fucking hell of a lot. He'll yeah. get over 200 metres, he'll make 40 tackles, he'll just do everything, he'll ball play in the middle. Then Tamalolo doesn't have to worry about fucking ball playing. Yeah. You just run, big boy. You know what I mean? Just get <coughs> it done. Like We, we contained Tamalolo and he ran 195 metres. <laughs> I thought we contained him, right? And he still did that because he did a little passing out the back. He had to be that connect guy. Yep. Ruben Cotter's that dude. And he'll dig into you as well. He's their spiritual leader, Ruben Cotter. So him being yep. back, the fucking mullets flowing everywhere, quad tats, all that sort of shit. <laughs> um, Griffin Neem, big boy in the back row. They're big and strong. They are. Has Griffin they're ever played in the back row before? Nah, uh, but they just know. want big bodies in there. Mitchell Dunn. Um, he a history on this kid. What is yeah, he? so he missed. Um, a l- I think he's similar to uh, Highland Lukey Stowe, where he missed a heaper um, footy with. <laughs> <laughs> he just snuck that one in there. Yeah, you don't get nothing well, by me. With with um, I think he he missed. Let's Google it. I think he missed. The, they had big raps on him going into last year as well, right. and he might have got done at the start of the last season with a really big injury, ACL, maybe maybe Achilles or something like that. Um, but Pardon yeah. the pun. <laughs> um, yeah, he only, he only played two games last year, whereas in 21 he played 20 games. Yes. So, yeah, definitely yep. an injury there. Right. He went down in um, round but they're, two. But they're they're, they are missing Highland, Lukey Stowe, and fucking um, mm. Jordan McLean for this one as well. So even yeah. though Ruben Cotter I don't think, comes I don't think they'll in. really miss much with, with Jordan McLean being out. Mm. He's been a little bit down. He's solid he's for been, him, yeah, he's Yeah, he's solid. But, I mean, like, Riley Price... He's still in there. Tanul yep. Brown's been pretty good. Jake Granville comes on and just tries to eat everyone. But they're not lacking size. Mm. You know, they're lacking a little bit of experience. But with Ruben Cotter back, he just like – he boosts that side up. And Drinky, the, the cohesion and drink, and drink, Yeah, like I think with those guys back, the forwards just have to do their thing. I think that forward pack right there can match anyone. Anyone find it really interesting looking at the Cowboys bench that they're carrying two utilities in Granville and Chester? Mm. Uh, not really, no. Because no, uh, a, a, a lot everywhere. of teams have like they have multiple positions now these days. Um, Granville is basically in this day and age. Even though Granville's a hooker, they chuck him on. They leave him on the same time as they leave. Um, Reese Robson plays lock, yeah. And then Tom Lolo moves up to the front row. You got to be versatile in this day and age. Yeah. If you've got like with the HIAs and the. Um, the send-offs that they have these days, you've got to have a versatile bench. Some people still like to keep it old school, like Ricky goes like have, predominantly old school. He have two he big, has, big boys. Yeah. And then two and then and then one guy who can play, you know, like a Jake Granville, he can play seven, he can play nine, he can play lock, you know, that sort of guy. So at a pinch, Granville that, could play then hooker. One, then the one dude's probably usually like an outside back who mm. might be in there for like an outside back. Yeah. Some coaches will go that wide. Yeah. And I think that's just a reward for Tom Chester because he's been unreal for the mm. Cowboys, even though they are, haven't been as but great since he's he been since can play been his in. whole junior league was in the halves. Tom Chester. Yeah. Oh, so okay, that's why they, like, he, he is a genuine 14. Yeah. So he can play anywhere in the halves. He played all his juniors there. He just got chucked at fullback because they didn't have anyone else. Okay. So, 
the, I think they said that last week when they were playing against us. Like he's he's in, he's he's, a, he's got halves like pedigree. So okay, cool. To go into fullback anywhere in the back line, so he's probably he's probably their guy. The Bala Lees are back too. Eddie Lee's playing his first game for the Dolphins outside his Be easy. potentially potentially outside his um cuz Brinko. So That's looking forward. Great. Eddie Lee's he's, he's fucking he's a good first grader man. Man, where's he been? Has he's he just been, been injured? injured heaps over the last couple Lower of years. Lower leg injuries, yeah. long legs too. Yeah. Long legs. Yeah, long pins. Is that his cousin, Brinko? Yeah, they're cousins, bro. Yeah, they're cousins, yeah. I believe they are. I, I, I've always thought they're cousins. They I, I heard we'll it, go with I heard it go before. With anyway. Yeah. Um, Who are we going? I'm going, I, I, I think the Cowboys. Let's go. Fuck. It's a tricky game, man. Mm, but it's at Townsville. I'm just backing them up there. They're very hard to beat. Okay. Oh, right. I'm Lukey. What happened to with that kid again? Uh, uh, did his calf or, or hammy hemi. this time or quad, something just like want that. Him to yeah. fucking yeah. get a whole season together. He'll play <laughs> representative straight away. He's a rep footy player for God. sure. All right, my anytime jam. I'm going to go to the Cowboys, but not confidently, as you can tell. But I'm confident Scotty Drinkwater turns up and has a big game because he's coming back from missing a couple of weeks. Unlike players who normally miss footy and coming back from injuries, he's going to be pumped uh, yeah. to re- re- repay what, the team. What injury did was he out? No, nah, he's uh, suspended for that hit on Corey Oh, Oates he'd be he, fucking pumped. Yeah, he'd be humming. Yeah, he'd be ready to go. And That's he was like three weeks. And yeah. he was flying too for those first couple. Even though Killing they, it. even though they lost against the Broncos, I think he still played gone well. Gone down ever since he's been out. Yeah, right? him and, and Hiku both missed a couple of games. All righty. Saturday, 5.30, Penrith will host Manly uh, at Penrith. Our friends at the tab have Penrith penciled in at $1.33 favourites. Scope Sea Eagles out at $3.35. That's disrespectful, isn't it? Lions at 9.5. It's about right. You like you like. Even though I'm taking it on, it's about right. I was about to say, why are you taking it on? What do you like about Manly this week? I just think it's it's like another statement game. So, like, with regards, we're talking about the Bulldogs and Souths. Like, if, if Bulldogs come out and put in a performance against Souths, you go, all right, fuck Bulldogs are for yeah. real. Yeah. Same thing, Mace. Like, it's both our teams. Okay. If Manly can come out and put a performance, even if they – ideally, they want to win, right? Josh Schuster comes back in. He's playing six again after missing a week. But that performance against Newcastle, no, and obviously – that's nothing no against you. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing against Newcastle. That was very underwhelming for as a Manly supporter mm. fan, and even just an NRL fan because I got like high expectations with Manly, and I was thinking, I asked myself the question on the review is like, is this who Manly are? Am yeah. I overhyping Manly? I will find out on Saturday, five thirty. You go to Penrith. Um, That's fuck. That will test your result. Um, it's the toughest road trip in in the last three years to go out to Penrith and win a game out there. So, um, therefore. I'm looking for the, the biggest name. Again, in these moments, you're looking for the biggest name. Who's the biggest name for Manly? It's Tom Travojevic. He's mm-hmm. my pick for any time try scorer. You get a juicy $2.50 from our ten- <laughs> friends at the tab, by the way. That is jam. I love the passion. He's, juicy. If he doesn't, like, this is a game. Uh, if you remember back to the finals, the year that they, they went bang, bang, got knocked out by Penrith. So mm-hmm. 21. And then Souths in yeah. 21. Um, they did a number on Turbo. They kicked in the corners. They got him and the Sabi. Team two. They got him and Sabi in the corner. They pinned him in the corner and they bashed him. They yeah. bashed him out of the game. And Turbo couldn't. And it's, and it's not because like Turbo's toughness either. He just had no opportunity. By the time he caught the ball, yeah, they were basically good. in his face already. But as a part of that, Mace, who was it that's. They had Matty Burton as their left centre and they had Viliami Kikau as their left edge yeah. back rower, right? So it's a different penalty team they're coming, coming, coming up against. I, I, I hope this is a game that Turbo takes his personal, remembers what happened to them at Penrith mm. and uh, I think Manly are going to be up for this one. I'm hoping Manly up for this yeah. one and they take it to Penrith. I think they can they can compete with anyone. Look at that side. Look at that forward pack. Paseca, Chaboy, Ujala, Kawaja, Tuolangi and Alloway. You, you look at that on paper and you think that's probably better than Leota, Kenny, Isaac, Harris is out. Hoskins and Yo. I'm thinking Manly going to go in that into that with confidence. Going, yeah. all right, let's just go through the middle. They this, should take it personal and go, yes. we should be fucking dominating this pack. $3 fucking 40, boys. I mean, obviously they're not talking about that shit, but it's disrespectful. Mm. You do have a look at the odds before a game going, what the fuck? Yeah, you're aware of it. You're, you're aware definitely of it. aware yeah, of what the odds are. You know what I mean? Like, and, and they don't deserve to be that. Backline-wise, with fucking Penrith, that's a rock that's a, star back line. It's a, it's a that's class. A and that's class. where they do their best work. It's class. And I mean, like, the backs with, with Manly, they're all they're all good players, man. There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, they're you got, solid. You got, you got solid. You got Jason Saab coming back for what, his second game or his first game? Manly's, his back, first five, game back. Manly's back five are like a forward pack. This is mm. Saab's first game so back. So they'll too. be attacking Saab, right? Not the toughest. You know, they'll be attacking Saab. 
Ruben and, Garrick's all right. Ruben Garrick, because they tested Saab and Garrick about a couple of years ago yeah. and they bashed him. But Saab's been out with an ACL. And it takes so, him a while to wind up as well. And it's going to take him a bit. And you, you don't think that... You, where do you tackle usually? But they're you, targeting you hit around the two. fucking legs, right? 100%. So he has been around there. So his leg drive will be out a little bit. Tom Traboy is still fine in his feet. Brad Parker and Morgan Harper... They're not doing much out of play twos mm. and threes. They're just dummy mm. half runs or one off the ruck. They're manageable. So what they're going to do is just try and suffocate man yes. with the kick, with the kick. Take the, the forward pack of, out of it. Take the forwards out of it. Play it down in those corners there, in the left-hand corner so Tom has to come out again yep. and fucking just bash him. Mm. And then they'll just rely on their systems and all their fucking defensive systems to just to just to do the job on them and then rely on that back line score tries and rely on that those back fives to get them out of trouble as well they're very hard to beat and they're clinical Manly Manly yeah I agree mate Manly got to take the fucking mindset of uh, almost how Parra Parra beat them a couple of years ago by Penrith doing to Penrith what they were doing against them yeah, yeah they, they took a hit because Penrith are elite at doing it because they've been doing it for yeah. three or four years now they've got it down pat but you almost got to take a little bit like alright we're not potentially going to make as many yards so almost as a forward pack you've got to get the boys together and go hey we're, we can outclass them in the forward packs offensively mm. but if we don't defensively bash them yeah. I'm talking about Toto and Taruva who average yeah. close to 200 each if they if if I don't care about the forward pack. If yep. Taru- Taruva and Toto to- are both hitting 200, there's a good chance Penrith win. If they- so they've got to take it personal as a forward pack. It might not. It's not the Penrith forward pack we're worried about. We've got to fucking do a number on this back five. So just say if you get it over Tom's way, like they kick that way. Mm. I need Ola Kawatu getting back on play two mm. or three. Mm. Definitely play three. So you can just channel down those numbers line. So if Tom can get it somewhere near the numbers line here, yeah. you go one more and then bang straight to Ola Kawatu, that's when you're going to get on the front foot. Mm. And if they kick it that way, and if they do the same with Tuolungi, one of those back rollers need to get back. Mm. You know what I mean? And they meet that their, their yeah, effort down the, plays. Down the line their early effort plays, set. you know, like because Olakwatu, he's a beast, and so is Tuolangi. So if they can get back on play twos and threes, because they're going to be doing that, and you've got to rely on your forward pack if you're manly, because mm. you're like, okay, well let's just fuck it, let's go at it, Penrith. You know what I mean? Like I'm not, I'm not really, I'm not scared of like I'm, I'm not running at fucking Leo to fuck. <laughs> um, you know the Mitch Kennys, Isaac New Sorensons, Hoskins, and Yo. You know, like mm. you, you'd be looking at that going, we need to go through the middle, yeah. play on the edges, all that kind of stuff. So when they are, when. Cleary is kicking it on a fucking dime. First of all, they need kick pressure on him, so they're not putting it down that way. Yeah, you know that's the only because it's going to be Romy chasing it like a fucking exactly. Animal. So they all work so hard together, but then they've got to go. Okay, Turbo, take the meters, and then Saab's got to take that tough hit on number two, and then hopefully our back rows back a little bit. Bang, you smack it on that numbers line, and then you have a little bit of a shift, and then you do it again, then you kick. That's that, that. That would be your plan. You got to move them around a little bit, but if you want to stay in the channel, just stay there for about one or two. Have a bit of a shift to the middle of the field. Get on the kick, DCE. Fucking kick chase. Let's do it to you guys. And it's fucking gonna happen like that mm. until someone breaks. And it's usually not Penrith. Mm. But those middles need to like middles and those those edges need to be really onto it. Yeah. If if they're gonna be a chance to win, you don't want to get you don't want to play Penrith's way. Then no. it's like you got to fucking have a crack at him. Like uh, if I'm looking, I'm just saying, I'm looking at the four pack. I'm like, I'm fucking. It's beatable. Yeah. I'm, I'm, it's my head on a plate. My head on a plate. You, you had kick out, and then you had Fisher Harris, and you got Appy. Liam Martin. And Liam Martin is a whole different beast. Mm. The whole different beast. I'm not even having this conversation with you because mm. yeah. you will get dealt with. Yeah. But you, you can fucking do some damage. That's why. There. That's why I reckon they have to isolate Toto. They have to get after yeah, Toto. He can't have two hundred. If you want to beat, if you want to beat Penrith, Toto can't have two hundred. You know, you can. You got to limit him to you even can, like a Tom Lawley performance, one fifty. You could limit him to just say if he gets like one eighty. You'd even be I happy with have, that. I can't have Taruva near two hundred. Yeah. yeah. I can't have Dylan Edwards over two hundred. Yeah. I can't have. Uh, I think Isaac Dill's going to get it. I think Dill because gets his fullback. He'll get the more yes, meters. But I don't. He want, gets twenty to thirty easy ones all the time because they're about one sixty, one seventy, and one about and two over two twenty. Yeah. That's fucking too much. Yeah. Anyway, yep. good luck. Who is your verdict, Mace? Yeah, Penrith. Okay. I just think that like that fifty three points are scored last week and like just that second half was like ugh. Yeah, it's clinical. Wow, clinical. A lot of lot of confidence coming out of that. Bounce gang bounce back from the bird gang for me. Beautiful. Tommy Turbo. Brisbane, back to back Saturday night games. That's not like Fuck have we agreed on anything yet? Oh Cowboys, eh? Hey? We both went Cowboys. Yeah, what was this? Broncos. Broncos, Canberra, Suncorp, Saturday, 7.35. Have they ever had a day game, Bronx? 
Oh, it's been a long time. <laughs> it's been a long. Do you remember they had a Friday night game? I've for got like a st- twenty I've got games a stat in a row. From re- someone recently, yeah. Oh, let me let me let me. Actually, I've got it. I've got it in my messages. Our friends at the tab have Brisbane very short favourites at a dollar mm. eighteen, whereas Canberra sits out at four dollars eighty. Boys, line is at Ooh. fourteen and a half. Mace, I'll throw to you. Is I'm this, taking a line. Is this a danger game for Brisbane? Mm. It is because I just think Canberra would be embarrassed about last week. And I don't think I don't think they're going to win, but I said I'd take the line. Sweet, no, 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 he did. Oh. Yeah, we just got sent a message. But um, yeah, I don't think they're going to get put fifty three on them. Here's here's one for you, Mace. Just got a, just got this sent in from. Uh, this is a TikTok comment that we got in our on our page. The Broncos TikTok. only only play TikTok. Don't you stop. <laughs> DJ Tucker Town. <laughs> seven games. Well, was that a Michael Jackson reference? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I just, start, I just started and I didn't know where I was going with it, so I kept on going. The Broncos only play seven games out of Queensland in 27 rounds this year. Oh, scheduling helps. Wow. That was similar to the Cows last year, wasn't it? They had a, they had a similar. That's nice. Some QRL members on that NRL board. Picking the schedule. <laughs> anyway, they're fucking good enough that they'll probably smack anyone wherever yeah. they play at the moment. So they should get the job done on the Raiders. Nice and easy one, this one. Yeah, can I you see, can, in any way, can you see a bounce back from the Raiders after? I can't see a bounce back. No, I yeah. can just see a massive improvement and yeah. just and it being really competitive and not, you know, you, you're not going to see, um, you know, a 40 point second half. You'll see like a definite change in their in their efforts and everything like that. They're way better than that, what they showed last week. Yeah. And I think you'll see it this week. Like, I don't. I wouldn't be surprised if it goes down the last like five minutes, like a real big play from like a, you know, like a one of these guys, like an Ezra Man, Selwyn Cobb. Oh, Ezra Man, anytime jam, yeah. mate. Keep talking into existence, baby. Yeah. Anyway, just sorry for cutting yeah, you off. Right. Grateful weight, Ezra Man from the skip. Keep going with that. Yeah, but I just think yeah, they got they just got too many class players, Brisbane. And if they're all if they're about it this year, they're going to put Canberra to bed. But. Mm. As I said, it's a Ricky Stewart coach team. It's fucking Canberra. They don't care about travelling games, you know what I mean? It's not an away game. Every game's just fucking... They've had three games in Queensland already, eh? Yeah. North Queensland. It's not good. Sticks with Corey Horsburgh might end up with a tan. <laughs> <laughs> the Horsburgh could be the tanned Horsburgh, up. And he might even just get to yeah. DJ Tiger Town's yeah. level. <laughs> <laughs> Which is off-white. <laughs> Pull out the fucking paint sample from Jewel Arts. <laughs> oh... Oh, yeah, it's a, t- it's a tough one for him. Fucking your boy Horsburgh, DJ Togertown, he goes in the lock. Um, shout out to Jared Croker coming back, playing. Yeah, how I've good? Got, I've got a lot of respect for him. He's probably got, you know, this is this is a big, you know, probably would be his last season, yeah. do you think, Mace? I think so. They're trying to get him to 300. Which you yeah, where's he and at? I think, and I think he's about he's, 290, 292? I think, yeah, I think he's about that. He's that kid. He don't want any leg ups, you know? He's oh, he's about, pretty, he wants to earn every... Every um, he's every a proper club man. Yeah, but he's, I'm just saying, like, he doesn't want to go. Hey, just get me to 300 because it's like it's yeah, awesome for up. my, you know, my resume. Like, mm. he wants to earn mm. his spot. He's coming straight back in and he's captain. He will. Last year, he come back and played one game. Mm. Had a when, terrible run of injuries. Yeah, he come back and played one game because he'd got beaten out. He handled it well. Yep. And he played fucking unreal to yeah. his credit. They, I remember a tough game, and right at the death, he went to go either save a try or score a try, You're and injured. fucking popped his shoulder yeah. out again. But he did play well in that game. So yeah. I just think um, if he, I he's, a, he's, he's a professional. Just played it, you know, he is the ultimate professional, best clubman. Um, yeah, I just want to see him just string a whole season together. Like mm. he's got his foot in the door again. He's the captain. He's the leader of that team. Team, just he's still only thirty or something. He's a fucking mate. good player, man. He'd only be a thirty. I swear, 31. if he didn't have all these injuries, he's getting that points, the points, um, the total points, oh, all-time whatever, points all time, all time. Scorer. Yeah, he's he's yeah. beaten that. He's he would have played well over three hundred games by now. Yeah. He's missed well, he did, about he, fifty. He must have started when he was a pup, only recently too. But he had a good run before. Yeah, he didn't get injured the last for couple like of years. Fucking yeah. Twelve years. Oh. Happens to the best of us. Yep. Good luck, but Father Time's undefeated. Against, was he going against Herbie or Tony? He will be. Matty Timokor plays right, but he used to play right predominantly as well. So yeah, he plays, want, no, he's played a lot of left, hasn't he, Croker? Yeah. No, he'll I, be left. He'll be left. Well, yeah, I think he'll be left in yeah, this, but yeah. I, I thought he played so predominantly he right. No, but my years time. I played against him for that. He was okay. always left center. He was yeah, always could be up wrong. Against, he went up against Gags. So, big one, Catones. Yeah, he's a different beast, Katoni, mm. and he's on, and you know, he's confident. Yeah, he fucking gets the ball. He thinks he can throw anyone off him. He smashes everyone. He competes hard, and it looks like he's fit. Mm. 
you know, and that's scary. Could be could be a bit dangerous for him. Um, you know, like we said, we 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 gave him his flowers and um, got nothing but respect for him. But he's missed a lot of first grade, and this fucking this this kid at the back called Reese Walsh, he's flying at the moment. He's, so he's going to be at the back. He's the best player in the comp. He's he the best player in the comp. He could he could he could pull him undone a couple of times. I think he's the best player in the comp. What he's doing now, that, I, I thought like just say everyone's like he's like Kalen Ponga. He's not what fucking he's. Like he doesn't play like Caelan Pong. He fucking mm. plays like Reese Walsh. Plays like himself. He yeah. don't step or anything like. He's just like a little Matty Bowen. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Like a little bit bulked up. Like a little bit more fucking. I reckon he's a bulked up snakey. Say, but he's not as tall as Snake. Yeah. He runs like Snake. Yes. But he's not. Do you know what I'm talking about with that? I know he's Hell, you know when Snake used to run like that, runs. and then he can like run out the back and sweep he's and like catch. He's like that 2.0. He's like a mix between Snake and Matty Bowen. Yeah. That's fucking dangerous. Yeah, it's dangerous. That's that elite. is so dangerous because Matty Bowen had. He's, I think he's top five most skilled, talented players I've ever seen in the game. Matty you Bowen. You played with yeah. him, Matty. Yeah, I did. Yeah, he's yeah. he's scary good. Injuries fucked his career. Still end up playing over 300 games, but he's one of the that the talent. You, if you if you play if you ask JT, he's putting Matty Bowen in his top five. Most oh talented, yeah, no, most no. talented player ever. I, ne- I I never got. I was lucky enough to play with. Yeah. I got so much respect for Mango. Reece, hey, Reece there's Walsh. so much respect about even guys that he played against who weren't his teammates, and then he was just that dude too. Like oh, he yeah. he was so well respected across the league. Mango. Love it, him because he's a gun, bro. But yeah. Reese Walsh, he's on a he's on a different planet. Yeah, you're not even you're not even if you're Kevy, you're not even coaching this kid. You're just going get the ball to number one. If you're, you're, that's all you're saying to Ezra, and that's all you're saying to Reynolds. Mm. Early ball to the one. Let him do what he does. Yep, sink that's in. It. Don't let it. Don't let. Don't you don't coach kids like that. Just yeah. fucking let him play. Sink in a little he's bit. He's on one of those Dally M seasons, man. Yeah, yeah, he is. He's I think on he's, that. He's, he's on, on that, that trajectory. trajectory, isn't he? Yep. So let it play. Let it play. He could take him. He could take him all the way. All right, we're both on the Bronx, and I got Ezra Mam as my anytime jam because I just like saying yeah. that shit because it fucking rolls <laughs> off the tongue. <laughs> First game on Sunday. <laughs> he loves it up at Suncorp too, Ezra. Yeah, oh, yeah. and that's the, that's the hardest thing. When there's forty thousand, then there will yeah. be forty thousand, and they are chronic crazy mm. Broncos fans. Yeah, they're going to be frothing. They the Broncos love it. Fans. The players love it. Up on the Goldie, four o'clock on Sunday. Gold Coast hosts St George for the first, uh, for the second time in about four or five weeks. Really? Yeah, they had them in round two. Dragons first win. According to the tab, Gold Coast should win this. Their favourites at a dollar seventy seven. St George mm. out at two dollars and five, but lines very short at one and a half. Dragons got it done over them last time. Do they do it again? <sighs> yeah, they can. Yeah. I think they can. Um, no um, Fozzy, no AJ Brim, Alejandro. Alejandro's not there. What happened to him? Good. Oh, the hamstring. Yeah. That looked like a grade three. The hamstring. Um, good replacement. Jaden Campbell slots straight in. Mm. Uh, big game for Toby Sexton. Ah, he's back. You know, he was he was primed to be their guy at the start of last year. Yeah. They let go of Fogarty. Um, you know, they wanted to put a lot of effort into Toby Sexton and at the time Brimson at the six. And... Um, you know, they brought Fozzie up for some stability this year, but now he gets an opportunity with a... You know, even though they lost to the Cowboys, they've been they've been pretty impressive as well. They they beat the Storm the week before. Um, I think they were on track, or the game would have been a lot closer against the Cowboys if uh, Foran and Brimson yeah. didn't go down. Uh, Big Tino's yeah, been Big, Big Tino. Time. And um, my anytime jam for this week is Dave Fafita. He was unbelievable uh, yeah. against the Cowboys in a, in a losing side, and I think he's... Uh, now that it's all his contract stuff's going, he could be the he could be the Angus Crichton of this year, uh, Mace. Where yeah. once the contract stuff gets sorted, it's like a weight's lifted off him. He doesn't have to think about that shit, and then he just goes out and plays footy. He's got that commitment again now from the Titans. Um, you know, you know, you go through it where fuck, he's that million dollar player. They're talking about easily living up to it. Mm. Well, guess what? Titans believe in you. They still believe yeah. in you. So. So they'll be they'll be pissed off that they didn't get this job done against uh, Dragons because uh, from the from memory it's probably their only poor performance of the year. So they would have round mm. one. Who do they play? Because they won. They the beat Titans. the Tigers. Yeah, they beat the That's Tigers. Right. They, they got embarrassed against the Dragons after everyone thought they were the grouse. Then they beat the Storm. Oh yeah, they had yeah. a good performance against um, the Cowboys, but they lost then fucking they the Primo and then they had the buy. So so I'm going to these, pick. These two teams yeah. are very hard to read. My bet for this week, I'm going to back St. George, 13 plus, and Ooh, Ravalawa, two, two tries. Oh. Yeah. yeah, I think so. I think they've got... I think they've, what do you like? What do you mean, what do I like? Well, about St. George, you backed them a couple I just, of times. Yeah, I, I just like the way they times. play. They got t- they're tough. 
They just had that real off game when I thought they were going to be like, who they got smashed by. Go smacked by Cronulla. Fucking Cronulla. Like, you know, but Molo, yeah, Little, that was when you Blake, them. Laurie, Murdoch, Masilla, Sewer, Bird, Mo Zembai, like, they're like DeBellin, like he tidies up a lot. Josh Kerr, Couchman. Josh Kerr's like been him. great this year. Ben yes. Hunt. Ben Hunt. Yeah. Like, I, li- I, li- I like the He's way only they played 30 last. minute stints, Kerr, but he's, he's been really good. Oh, he rips and tears for Tra- that. Half Terrell hour. Sloan, I like his little, yep. the little touches that he's been having. Yeah. Uh, I don't I hate don't, it, OG. No, I don't hate it. I just it. don't think that, um, you know, the Titans don't have that strike anymore with uh, without foreign. Like, he really mm. strains it up. Like, Tanner Boyd and Sexton, they're probably the worst halves in the game. Easily. Name mm. the worst half half combination. They're young and, like, inexperienced. Like, yeah. I don't, like, think, I don't think, you know, usually you've got one guy who's played a fair bit of rugby league. Both of these guys are maybe in second Ed, year. Maybe Sean O'Sullivan and Katoa uh, yeah, as starts, starters. They're, they're, you know, and they're not as in the worst, but just unproven. Yeah. Um, He's not proven, like, Sexton. Tigers are pretty bad. Yeah, Sexton and Boyd's not proven. Well, how moment. come you didn't say anything about your Tigers, TJ T- Tiger 10? You think we're going to forget? Oh, I just tuned out. I wasn't listening. It was daydreaming. <laughs> I, I, I don't know what you're they're talking up, about. They're, they're, so they're how, many, how, how many have we won this year? I've been asleep. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. I just like the way they're playing, and I just think they can just put it on the on the time. I don't hate it. They play fucking tough, man. I they don't hit hate hard. It. Fucking please, don't fucking do it to me again, St. George. I like it. I like it. Thirteen plus. Yeah. We'll tell our friends at the tab. We'll put yeah. up a little. We'll put it in our LPC. Mm. We'll chuck it in the LPC for you, nice get and only see the punters get on. Ravalawa times George. two. Thirteen plus. Yeah. I like it. There it it's is. It's a ballsy bet. That's value. What do I'm, you like? I'm on Titans, but with no confidence, especially now. OG's going thirteen yeah, plus. The not, Dragons. I don't. I, oh yeah, exactly. I don't have confidence in the Titans. Yeah. I just don't. Against. I've got more confidence. Most teams. Like I just. I know. I know. St. George just play this no nonsense footy. Can I talk you into this? Yeah. I'd rather hit the feeder at three dollars with our friends at the tab. For an any time try scorer, then I would Titans dollar seventy seven to win the game, because you just got to you just got to rely on Fafita. I reckon to score. Fafita three bucks is value. That's good value. That's great value. Yeah, that's She's better to score. That's better She's than score. Than, you can win thirteen plus with Ravalawa two tries, and I still get Fafita. That's we got jam. That's we like got Oprah. Jam. All right, let's you go. get a bet. Yeah. You get a bet. Let's win. agree. Let's agree upon that. All right, All right, on to the next. No. Sunday six fifteen at Newcastle. Uh, the Knights will host the Warriors. Odds are tidy, boys. Warriors are favourites, all the away from home at a dollar eighty five. Newcastle ten cents out further, dollar dollar ninety five. Lines at one and a half. Two sort of surprise packets, Fucking I'd say. Nicole. Wait, before we get into this, this I wanted to talk about this. Sorry, boys, um, just quickly because I, f- I forgot about it. Yeah, I was yeah. going to put it at the start of the show. Murata Neokor is out. Can you check and see how many weeks he's got for? Have they suspended him for that fucking awful crusher tackle? Do you like so, Mace? You missed this game because you were going to the Bulldogs um, yeah. game. So you missed the Warriors versus Sharks game. Um, the crush two? Did he get two weeks? Two weeks. This we, is a we, joke. We, with an early play, uh, I, boys. I, I just want to start on this one. The hip drop tackle. Um, it's gone too far for me. It's gone. The outlawing of the tackle. Has gone too far. So, Mace, you missed the uh, the game on the weekend because you, you, you're yeah. heading out to the Bulldogs game, yep. getting ready for your game at 6 o'clock. But there was a couple of incidents. Murata Neokora was trying to make a tackle on uh, Sifatalakai from behind after he'd sort of just made a little break one-on-one, sort of fell off the back. It was not even a penalty in my eyes, and I like to think a lot of people feel the same way about this. And then a little bit later, Dale Finucans was probably – a little bit more closer to 50-50, but again, still no penalty. If they gave penalty, then I'll, I'll be like, all right, I can understand a penalty. But they gave him both 10 in the bin, and now Fanukin got three or four weeks as well. Three or four really? weeks. Ockenball got one. Correct. Ockenball got Ockenball one. one. It's gone too far, mate. And you know why? And you know, you know who's to blame? In my opinion, the players. Because just like the crusher tackle of years past where players are fucking grabbing their necks to because yeah, they know yeah. it's a signal that'll get a penalty. Mm. This is about well, you know, twenty four months to eighteen months ago. That's slowly uh, gone. Slowly in. got out of the game because people were starting to understand it's a shit way to get a penalty, it's a shit way to win a game. And the HIA rule come in also, right? Where people started to worry if they grabbed their neck and their head, they could potentially get 15 yes, minutes. That, so it, so it deterred players from doing it. At the moment, um, the ones... I don't like the tackle in the format of what Paddy Carrigan did to Jackson Hastings last year. That was a clear hip drop where Jackson Hastings had sort of... 
shown enough strength where he, you know he wasn't going to the ground. And Paddy Carrigan, it was more of a, it's still a lazy action. I don't think any player goes in to intentionally do it, but it was more like he was stationary and drop it in. The tackles on Murata Niakora on Talakai and and to a lesser degree Fanukan. You got to realize how hard it is to tackle these athletes these days, and these tackles have been happening for years. But like I said, and I'm going to stand by this: it's the, if the players don't want to get suspended for this, then it's up to the players to stop fucking grabbing their legs because they know it's a trigger, and they know that the NRL is trying to clamp down on it. So the the not only are the referees watching it, the guys up top, the bunker are watching it as well because. The game went on in the Sharks game for at least a set, maybe even another one. And then um, I think it was Cummings who was the ref was like confused because he's like, oh, yeah, what is it? And they what, drove all the way back 50 metres for a tackle that Murata Niakora had done on um, Sifatalakai. Mm. And he got 10 in the bin. And, and people were, oh, I don't know, I was watching and I was, you know, in, in a couple of group chats, I'm going, that's the what, that's almost as the worst sin binning I'd seen all year. Wow. Then they followed it up with Finucane. Um, if the boys want to get out of the, if want to get it out of the game, it always comes back to the players. Yeah, there are some guys in, in particular, like I said, the Hastings. He fucking broke his ankle. Disgusting. Mm. There are really bad um, incidents. I think Liam Knight. Um, Liam happened, Knight's one was the worst. It, it happened to him. His career. It happened to him in New South Wales Cup. I, it's not that I'm saying that I, w- I don't want to. Get that tackle out of the game. It's got to go, bud. But some of these, some of these incidents that are happening to players are just. I think it's, it's, when you, it's when you just do in it. the contest, and these fucking tackles are going to happen. But if someone's stationary and they hip drop, or they cannonball, or they if they do any of that, then I'm all for getting it out of the game. But I think it's gone but too far. How do you far, eradicate mate. it? You got to eradicate it by like just obviously you don't do that at training. I'd love you to show you the it. tackle, mate. No, I know, I know. Right yeah, I'll what he got because. But I'm just saying, like, what you do, you just you, you got to see. You, like yeah, Jason Talmadge, Jason, Jason Talmadge was playing on it the might weekend, come up right? Or none. And and Ockenbaugh, he's he's been a winger his whole career. Next yeah. week he's, he's tackling Jason Talmadge yeah. in the middle. Like he lost his legs. So what happens when you lose your legs, right? When you when you can't get the guy and you're tackling from behind, How, you lose your legs. Watch this life for us. Yeah, you lose your legs and your hip just gets put on the back of their legs. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's not like... Have you seen the new Cora one on Telecom? No, no, no. I haven't yeah. seen it. I'm going to watch it now, but I'm going to keep talking through it. But yeah. the players need more... It needs more ownership on the players. Like, yeah. if you drop your... If you lose your legs, you understand you're going to put your hips on this guy's fucking legs, back yeah. legs. So they need to understand. See, that fucking... That's just a tackle. Exactly. That's my point. Yeah. But that's why saying, it's he, gone too far for me, mate. He didn't lose his legs. And he no. Got, yeah, but he, that's what I'm saying. Like, so the refs need to understand yes. and rule it by how it is a, how it's determined to be a hip drop. Yeah. So if, you're, if I'm right, Can you get in, the so if I'm well? right in the middle of the tackle here, and I'm tackling you one on one, and you tackle and you go through me, and I drop my legs. Yeah. That's fucked. Yeah. Send off. Get yeah. off. Yeah. But if you're trying to get, like, especially the, these cross, like where he was coming from an angle, yes. and you tackle and you find out you, you just landed on the back of their legs, those, those is, as you said, those tackles have been happening for fucking 100 years. You can almost That's pull what up, happens, but I'm just saying. You can pull up but three games. The refs that need to understand on. what a hip drop is. Yes. So what they need to understand is they need to go watch fucking video of all the worst hip drops and then compare it to whatever the fucking Nick Cora did. And yeah. that was just a normal tackle. So I'm having a look at Finucane's now. Give us a look. You know what I mean? So I think I think the trainers. The, I mean, the refs need. See that one? Like you got you can't drop your hips like that with Fanuka. Yeah, it's 50-50 That one, right? So yeah. I'm I'm more. But that's what I'm talking about with with losing your legs when you've got them around the waist. Four weeks for that? No. Yeah. Three, three no, early. No, I don't agree yeah. with the weeks, yeah. but they're trying to get rid of it. Yeah. But they need to understand and rule upon it properly. Yeah. Fucking near Cora's mum was was a legs tackle. Yeah, it was awful. And he just sort of rolled. It on was him. awful, mate. And they, he's missing a game now. How many two games for that or one? Fanukin. Yeah. No, no, near Cora. Two. Fuck me. But they need but they need to He's understand. been unreal for the Warriors too. Yeah. He's gonna be a big loss. But they need to understand what a hip drop is. And it, and it is bad when it gets when it's wrong. But you gotta understand you just can't that near Cora one's not a hip drop. It was a routine. I can tackle. understand, yeah. But you just don't lose your legs. Can't lose your legs mm. in tackles. They don't, we don't get taught that at training or any wrestling sort of thing, so it's up to the player. But it's up to the rest to understand what a hip drop is. There you go, wise fans, I'm sticking up for you too. I've had enough. Skips that enough. Fuck. Well, all right. Newcastle <laughs> oh. Warriors, what's your verdict? Um, no, let's get into the game. Talk about the game. Knights, no, who are we going? Knights and Warriors? Get yeah, uh, let's, yeah, let's talk it out. Where are we going to go? Let's talk it out. Wow. Should we start again? 
I'm going the Knights. I'm going the Knights. I like what I saw last week, the last couple mm. of weeks. They're gritty. They've got they've you know they've finally found some sort of consistency. Forwards are all back. Leo Thompson's been great. Yep. Jack Johns has found that little bit of a balance in his game. The bench nice is pretty in. good. And it's at Newcastle. That's it. If it was in the Warriors, if it was in New Zealand, I'm going New Zealand. So but Newcastle I, think, I, think you, Newcastle, I think Newcastle can get him. All right. Oh, I'm going to go the Waz on this one and not because of all the comments that we got that I'm a fucking Waz hater because <laughs> I honestly believe that they're the better team this year. I've mm. seen a more consistent effort from the Waz across the board. Um, it's a little bit tricky again. It's like the, uh, I, you know, we selected the, uh, I selected the Dolphins last week against the Dragons. Mm. Probably thought the Dragons... I probably thought the Dragons were going to win, but I'd seen more a better performance out of the Dolphins all yeah. year. It's sort of the same way here, where I'm going to take the Waz because of what they've the way they've performed this year. Uh, very emotional game. Wonder if that has an impact on on them as well. Big performance against the Cronulla Sharks. It, do we have a letdown? But um, I like the I like the Warriors outside backs, mate. So you, yeah. you, you told us to start a couple of weeks ago going in the Bulldogs game. I wonder if they're still leading that. I de- well, that'd be yeah, pretty close, man. They haven't, they haven't backed off. Yeah, and, and they get an opportunity um, in the outside backs. Dom Young, Greg Mazu, outstanding offensive players. Still yeah. very questionable in defense. Yeah, Gags and Bradman, was they've, they've been on in attack. Gags well. is solid. Bradman best is solid. But um, I'm going to go the Waz and I'm going to go... Uh, uh, why, how, how do I keep getting this wrong? Billy Army... It's like I Vi- say, Billy Army kick out all the time. Billy Army, Vilea. I think I got to say Valayami. As I got to say his last <laughs> name with the start. Billy yeah. Army, Vilea. Uh, anytime try scorer. I just think I, I think he can be a real play for them, mate. Like He's I, good. He can play. He got he got um He's got so much upside. I haven't realized a good defensive player. Yeah. He got him one on one. Yeah. That's fucking big. Yeah. And it was like he's know, got he's, he's, he's got a got bit of everything. Some, he's got he's, some skills, man. He's got a good size. He's got um, he's, he's, he's still got he's still got the odd Paul Reed, but fuck, he's he's like a young a rookie, kid. He's probably man. he's a 30, 30, 40 gamer, so yeah. it'll come. Um, yeah, him and him and Edward Cossey on the uh, no, he's been playing left, so he's been playing with Montoya. Um, yeah, I, 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 like I like this, this game. game. Yeah, good. it's gonna. I think it'll be an entertaining game. The only thing is, is it is it Sunday at six fifteen? Is this the worst time slot in the game? Yeah. I thought it'd be over because daylight savings is done, but mm. it's a fucking night game. And big, big, big in, big in. Tamari Martin missed one game. Uh, does Toho Harris come back as well? Yeah, he's playing. Yep. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Skips back as well. Give me the wires. Beautiful right. last game. Game of the round will be a close one, boys. West Tigers take on the Parramatta Eels uh, at a course stadium. Three twenty-seven is not too bad for the Tigers. You it's take that. It's not three twenty-seven. We got mate. we got four twenty with the tab. We, we got four, we got four twenty here about. outsiders for the Tigers, <laughs> as per our friends at the tab. Parramatta at dollar twenty-three favourites. <laughs> Line is out at a tw- uh, healthy twelve and a half. This was a game last year where Parramatta obviously um, lost when you know yep. they were expected to win. Does lightning strike twice? What do you think? Are you, how do you feel about this, DJ Tiger Town? How do I feel about it? Um, I, I don't see us winning. <laughs> what about I'm looking at that name, Hayes Dunster? I was calling Hayes Perrin Hayes Dunster for about six weeks. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, I'm an idiot. And I, was, I wasn't hiding it. Oh, Hayes Dunster! Well, yes. Were you going full name on him? Full, full, full name. <laughs> and I went... He's a good player, Hayes. Because like, I didn't cousin. know there was two Hayes that we got from fucking Parramatta. There's yeah. two Hayes players. And I'm like, it must be just Hayes, Hayes done so I've never, you know? And yeah. I'm like, fucking hell, his name's Hayes. He's, uh, well, I think he got done from his fucking brother-in-law, uh, <laughs> Tiro uh, Fu- 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 yeah. with the with the um, hip drop. So that was a bad one as well. Trial. Again, it's like the, the, the worst case. Uh, I don't want to go over it again, but that was no. a bad one. Um it's laziness from players. We'll go over it again. It's laziness. What's happened Don't to, lose your legs. Where's, what, what happened to Wonga Blake? How come he's out? They've just dropped him. Have they dropped him? Oh, yeah, he's shit. playing cup this week. Oh, yeah. Okay. Who's this kid? Did he Sean miss Russell. last week as well? No, he played last week. No, nah, he? he's played every game. Sean Russell's a para junior. Very, very good. Yeah, Woodaboo. Him and Clem is going to go at it. Big Stefano, Campbell Gillard. Yep. Clem's 200th. Shout out. Big 200. Good on you, big day. Oh, yeah. Wonga Blake's to number 22. Yeah. Fuck, see, you look at these forward packs and you go, you know what? They should even each other out. Pretty even, aren't they? Big props. The forward pack Steph. hasn't been the issue all year, mate. They hold up. I just don't think yeah, they have that... The spine. They spine just and don't backs. have that um, relationship with Appy yet. It'll happen, but I don't know. I'm not, I'm not going near um, Tigers, ever. Mm. 
Yeah. The, yeah I don't, I don't, change yeah. the change the spine again. So Dewey comes back into six. It's too much fucking around. That's frustrating, given that Sheen's last week came out in the media and said that apparently Dewey was the best fullback at the club. And now he's back at six. And Wakem was also told that he had the six jumper for the oh, entire Wakem's year. Oh, not even in and the now, team. And now he's playing for the Magpies. It's so you give him <laughs> one crack and then he's done. He got two. He had two. He come off the bench against you guys. And then played, he started. Well, he nearly won him the game against, against Melbourne. Melbourne. And, and did you play a game last week as Brisbane well? Last Brisbane, yeah, yeah. So you got two. Did. Yeah, got two. That's tough. But he's not the answer anyway, Wakem. No, respectfully. He's not Alan Iverson. <laughs> <laughs> Nowhere near it. <laughs> like, yeah. Fuck. Oi, last resort for the Tigers, if this doesn't work for a couple of weeks, it's probably Wakeham and Brooks gets dropped eventually, right? It has to be. What's the next step if this doesn't work? What's the next step? Yeah. You just got you, you, somehow you've just got to you persist got, with it. You gotta find a spot for Dane. That's what you gotta do. He could like he, he's playing well. Oh, do you see Dane Laurie's been done liking uh fucking Broncos tries on Instagram? What happened? Um Selwyn yeah. streaked away. S- and uh, the NRL cut it up and throw, threw it up on their Instagram that night. And Dane Murray liked, liked it. Yeah, uh, him getting no, he didn't oh. play. He oh, wasn't playing. No, he's obviously been dropped. That's oh, one does of his, that mean anything? Nah, that's one of his Baller boys. They would have played. They would have played yeah, Indigenous uh, together, wouldn't they? Not, they not event. Into it like that. A bad look. Not event, but a bad again because it's the Tigers. It's just like the Tigers been on the pokies right. last year yeah, when they're losing no. games. It's like he can like whatever he wants. Well, I reckon if you go through and look, there will be other players from other teams that like have liked everything. Um, yeah. Like ooh, maybe not the game, eh? <laughs> All right, question. So, t- Tigers bash. Page. Yeah, like. <laughs> Tigers bash pillar to post this week, obviously, about the jersey. Pasco's been in the news. We're 0 5. Do you see a response which is good enough to, for us to get a win, or is it not happening? I think you can win, but I just don't think you will. Okay. That's. that's I can see it just based off last year as well, yeah. and Parramatta have a. These are always good games. This will be a good game. Yeah. Parra will be fired up after last year. That'll be in their heads. And did Parra lose last week? Yep. So mm. they're they lost, pissed off. They lost to the Roosters. Yeah. They were never really in so that game. Yeah, but they'll be filthy on their performance last last week. Yeah. So they're coming here to just you know put a number on you guys. So good luck. That's they'll be, it. They'll Parrot. be catching those hands, Brendan. Um, so <laughs> that's the second fucking week you've used that. <laughs> it's good. Bro. No, I haven't. No, no. It's Jermaine was, Hopgood. Oh, sweet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, my anytime jam. I've got yeah. Paramount to win. And uh, who else? Mitchie Moses. Oh, Mitchie he, Moses he loves playing, playing against us. He loves playing See, against us. See, he, he's liable to play him into form. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, good on this you, This is Tigers. a game. Do you get the, oh, yeah, our, friend, our friends at the tab have got Mitchie Moses at $3.40. That, um, that, that's value given his try scoring record against us. Yeah, he loves it. And I think it's a real, uh, it could be a proper dagger. Imagine if he goes. Scores against Parramatta, looks into the fuck, yeah, you know. So Katoni does the This Is Our House, and fucking Jamin Salmon does the Weak Gutter Dog, and then Mitchy Moses looks at the camera and goes, Sign the dotted line <laughs> as he scores against the Tigers. Or well, just goes five years and points at his fucking badge. <laughs> just taps his chest. Yeah. Five years. Five, yeah, five more. All right, Show boys. The money. All right, let's go through the ch- chasing the grateful weight, and you can wrap us up there, DJ Tokes Down. Is that it? Yeah, I'll uh, just, deals, mate. I just want to get this right because it took me about five times. Takes last week. You can find all current LPC bets under the Bets Friends banner on the Tab app. Hey. <laughs> Anyone chasing the grateful weight with the skip? I'm feeling it this week. I tell you, mm. Mace, you can feel the energy. I like it. Melbourne versus Sydney Roosters. Give me Juzzy Olam. Bulldogs against South. Give me Lockie Ilias. North Queensland at home. Get their boy Scotty Drinkwater back against the Dolphins. I'm looking for a big game. For Tommy Turbo against Penrith at Penrith from Manly. Ezra Mann for the Broncos against Canberra. David Fafita at home against the Dragons. Viliami Vilea got it right that time. Newcastle versus the Waz. And Mitchie Moses does a number on the West Tigers. Signs on the dotted line. Five years. Hits the badge. Game over. See you next week on Review. <laughs> See you guys. Bye-bye. <laughs>